All right, two-time PGA champion Brooks Kepka is joining us now at the 105th PGA Championship. Brooks, welcome to Oak Hill and your 11th PGA Championship. Uh, you obviously played very well at the Masters. How are you feeling about your game coming into the second major of the year? Yeah, I feel good. Game's in good shape, feel healthy, and um, you know it's been nice to just play some good golf. So I'm looking forward to a good week, good golf course. It'll be a good test. All right, we'll open it up for questions, starting with Gary on 12. Brooks, in uh, 2019, before Beth Page, you, you shared with us your your own kind of algorithm to handicap a major championship field, and you reduced it down to about 12 guys that you needed to beat. When you're right, is that still the same thing? I still think it is, yeah. I still think there's a lot of good players, and they should think the exact same thing. Um, Right, you should have a lot of confidence, and, and you can see it. I think when you look at the major leaderboards over the last, I don't know, maybe five, six years, I mean, it's pretty repetitive on, on the guys who are at the top, so I think it's still the same. Mike, uh, microphone 11. Brooks, I was actually the one that asked you that question, so I'll go to something different. Uh, do you feel that a course like Oak Hill, the toughness of it, sets up that game plan for you? And do you feel you're flying a little under the radar this week? And I bet you like that. Um, I don't know about flying under the radar. I haven't really paid much attention. I've been pretty busy this week. Um, I, I like the golf course. I think it's good. I like the, the older style golf courses. Um, I think it's very, very tough with the rough. It's kind of a mixture of a PGA and US Open, I think. Um, you miss greens out here, you're going to make a lot of bogeys. You miss fairways, you're going to be making quite a few bogeys. You're out of position. So you got to hit fairways, and um, you know the golf course can be tough, especially if this wind blows. Next, let's go to Mike 8, followed by Mike 1. Yeah, Brooks, obviously you played so well the week of the Masters, but didn't have the Sunday that you wanted in the days and weeks after that. How did you process that, and how do you think back on that week? Um, I just... I reflected all Sunday night. I didn't sleep Sunday night, just trying to figure out what exactly it was. Um, thought about it for, for a few days after and really honed in on, on what I was doing and what, what went wrong. And, you know, from there, uh, just never let it happen again. That's the whole goal, right? You never, you're not trying to dwell on it. Yeah, I mean, it sucks to finish second, but at the same time, as long as you learn from it, um, you'd be fine. I mean, I think I finished fourth in, what, four or five majors now. Uh, so, just trying to learn from each one of them. Is there any part of what you learned that you would like to share with us? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah, I keep that to myself. Uh, one, Brooks, uh, on the, in the Barstool podcast, you, you referred to that as, as choking at the Masters. I'm just wondering, are you being hard on yourself, or, or, or can you explain what you mean by that? Like, what what happened if, if you felt like that is, was the word to describe it? Yeah, I'm just messing around with those boys. Those boys are, okay. are quite fun. Uh, part of my taste. I love those guys. Big Cat and PFT were, were thinking it if I didn't say it, so you might as well just get it out there right away first so they can't say anything. So, I mean, that's not really how you felt it went down. No, I mean, I mean, theoretically, yes, it is. It is choking, right? If you have a lead and cough it up, that's choking. So, um, but at the same time, it's, I don't, I'm not dwelling on it. Um, you know, I've been in the lead, that position a couple times and haven't capitalized. I can't, I can't do it every single time. I'm not perfect. Uh, but as long as I can learn from it, I'll be, I'll be better off from it. Alex on two. Yeah, Brooks, uh, congratulations, I guess. When's the baby due? Uh, in a couple months. Yeah, okay. Um, Zach Johnson was in here, our U.S. Ryder Cup captain, and was talking about some specifically about you guys, meaning the live guys. One of the questions was is um, how he's going to figure out if he would pick you guys or not, because it's going to be pretty hard, as you know, with points to get on the team in the top six. The question is, do you, do you think about that? Are you interested in that? How concerned are you about trying to get on the team? Uh, I mean, it'd be awesome to represent the United States, and anytime we do it, it's always fun, but I'm not focused on it. It's not like my first thought when I go go play well this week. If I handle my business out here, everything will take care of itself. If I go, I mean, if, if you win, go second, first, 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 it'd be kind of tough not to pick, right? So if you go take handle business, I feel like 
I should be fine, but uh, it's up, it's not up to me. It's up to Zach and, and what goes on. So um, I just play my best and see what happens from there, but I'd love to play for him. Mike, 19. Just, just following on from that, Brooks, sorry. If you needed a pick, would you be confident of, of getting one? Confident? I, like I said, it's tough to be in Zach's mind or where he's at, but um, I'd love to make it hard on him. I think that'd be cool. Uh, like I said, I, the only thing I can do is just go play good. And if I play good, everything takes care of itself. But do you think there are factors in play here beyond what you do on the golf course? It's, it's a different situation, right? Yes, like I said, it's not up to me. I'm not, I'm not the one making the decisions. I can only just go play golf. 14. Brooks, you're not on the PGA Tour anymore, so now you can talk openly about how bad the slow play is. How big a problem is it? How would you fix it? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not never quick. Um, I was talking about it when I was on the PGA Tour, too, so I don't, I'm not afraid to talk about it. You don't have to worry about getting fined anymore. <laughs> I never was fined for anything, so okay. I'm all right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys out here that take their time. Um, it's... I think it is a problem. I mean, technically in the rule book, it says you got 40 shots or 40 seconds to take your shot, or I think it's what it is. Um, and if you're taking over, technically you're breaking the rules, right? So I don't know. How would you fix it? Uh, honestly, I'd start stroking guys. If you're going to take that long, you got to get stroked. Doesn't matter if you're, um, I mean, there's certain circumstances where, you know, the wind switches, something like that. It's understandable, but, you know, taking, taking a while is, um, I just think, unnecessary. Alex? Just to follow up a little on that, do you think baseball and what they've done kind of shows the other sports, especially this sport, that, you know, if you do it right, it can be much better, make the sport much better? I think so. I think, I mean, that's why they've got the pitch clock, right? I mean, technically, I think you saw DP, they did a shot clock event, I think, a couple of years ago, if I'm right. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't can't remember if anybody got, got clocked for it, but. It'd be interesting to see. I know if you follow guys around with a stopwatch this week, there'll be plenty of guys that are over over time and stuff like that. But it's you know I, I can't remember the last time anybody was stroked. I remember the little kid at Augusta. That's I don't know if anybody's been stroked since. That's kind of the most recent one I can think of. But um, yeah, there's some guys that probably definitely could be stroked. Over to eleven. Brooks, uh, the players talk about patience to win a major. Rory said it's going to take discipline this week. What's what one word would you say? Mm. I think discipline's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's a grind. Major weeks always, always tough. You know, it, it's always going to be a tough golf course. You got to plot your way around. Um, understand where to miss it, where not to miss it, and uh, it just comes down to discipline. I feel like every time I've won, I've been super disciplined. Uh, where I hit it, the shots, uh, not doing exactly. Maybe I, w I might want to hit driver off the tee, but it's not what the hole or pin location calls for. Um, and just staying patient, I think, is a, a massive thing to win a major. Are there any holes that you see where there's risk reward for your game? Mm, I haven't played the back nine yet, um, so I haven't uh, haven't seen the changes since 13. But uh, I mean, I do know that there are some. Uh, I think it was the 14th drivable. Uh, so, yeah, I'd be interested to see the back nine today. I think probably probably answer that by the end of the day. Mike, one. Brooks, do you feel your game is at the same level it was in 19 when you won at Beth Page, and you were on that you know sort of major run there through those couple of years, or is there still something that's not quite back to that level? No, I mean, I feel I feel great. My body feels good, uh, swinging it the way I want to moving the way I want to. And then from there, it's just about, you know, game plan and going out and executing. And I feel like I've done a good job of that, you know, this off season, uh, being able to kind of do everything I need to do in the gym to, to get my knee more flexible, stronger, um, and get it. And to be honest with you, my right knee is better than my left. Uh, we've, we've tested it, so it's been kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I feel 100%, so there's no reason why, right? I mean, I'm. 33 now, and I think what your prime in golf is from when you're about 30 to 40. So I'm, I haven't quite hit the middle of it, but I, I feel pretty good. What, what about from where you were a year ago at this time at Southern Hills? I mean, was that a particularly difficult week for you, uh, you know, physically or even just where your game was? Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that went into that. I think 
I mean, I was spending maybe five, six hours on just trying to get everything, my body, the way I wanted it to. Uh, like I said, my knee was a lot worse, but it's fine now. So, you know, I can't look back, and I'm not looking back in the past. It is what it is. Uh, that happened, and um, but I feel good now, so I'm just trying to focus on this week. We will wrap things up with Mike 10, followed by 8. Um, another thing that Zach mentioned was that he has approached all the possible um, team members with the idea of going to Rome like two or two and a half weeks before uh, the actual event. I um, wonder if you should be talking about that, what your reaction would be, what you think it would do for the team. Uh, I mean, two and a half weeks. Wouldn't that be right before the U.S. Open? No, 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 no. Before the actual. Oh, before the actual. Before event. the Ryder Cup. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think a lot of the guys have played that golf course, so that could be good. Um, go over there, go see it, um, see what you're into. I think it's pretty hilly, from what I understand. So, um, look, anytime you see a golf course and you can kind of scout it early, I think you see it. Major championships guys will come uh, look at the place a little early if they can. Um, scout it out, see what's going on, so you, you don't have to do as much work and you can kind of focus on what you need to that week. So, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing anytime to go scout it out early. So, just to clarify, has he taken your temperature on that? Has he spoken to you about no, being just, on that trip? I just saw Zach for the first time maybe, okay. I don't know, 30 minutes ago. I was just talking to him for a little bit. Just curious, with everyone layered up today, what's the coldest round you ever remember playing? Bay Hill. 2000, maybe 18. Florida that was cold. Coldest. Yeah, it's brutal. That was honestly, it was. I think even Henrik said it was the coldest I think he's ever been. So <laughs> that was. Uh, I just remember. I think I had like five, five layers on, six layers on, trying to hit balls, just making sure you don't thin it off the first. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Brooks. Thanks.